my dear water signs. How are you? I hope June is treating you well. This is Jody with Red Door Tarot, and I'm going to do a June reading for you guys. Um, I'm sorry I'm not able to do um, each individual Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I have just been really busy lately, and I'm just trying to balance some things out, including uh, my art and tattoo work and kids. So um, this is the best I can do for you right now. I'm sorry. I'm just going to do uh, some readings today for each of the four elements. So remember, this is a general reading for Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, so it may not resonate with all of you. So um, let's get started, see what has to or wants to come out for Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio today for June. Okay. So first card out, and I think every other sign has gotten it, or every, at least three of the other readings have gotten this. This is uh, some type of competition. It can be petty quarrels, petty conflicts um, with others. It could be at work. It could be in um, your love life. There could be competitors that you're not even aware of um, in your love life. Uh, I'm not getting a strong love life vibe except for this Ace of Cups down here, but uh, I feel like there's also, we have the strength card here. There is this need to call upon some serious inner strength and inner wisdom. And this is um, a very feminine energy, but this is Leo energy as well. So there could be a Leo that you're dealing with. But most of all, this strength card is um, calling upon that inner strength to tame the beast within. So whatever that means for you, whatever um, the things that you struggle with, might be whether it's self-love or it's some type of addiction or uh, it's it's um, the victimized mindset. It's something this this card is calling upon you to get past that and and move forward, um, assimilate those lessons that you've learned in your past relationships or um, in past struggles and incorporate them fully into your being and incorporate them specifically as strength, as the power to overcome anything that you um, are faced with in the future. So that's a beautiful, a beautiful card. Um, we also have the Fool card in the reverse, which is interesting. The Fool card is pure potentiality. It is the zero card of the tarot. It's not even a one. It is, um, so when we talk about the tarot, the major arcana, it is the Fool's journey. This is the fool's journey. The whole tarot is made up of the fool's journey. We start with the fool. And the fool is about to jump on this off of this cliff. He's just, he's walking. He's not looking where he's going. He is super stoked about his journey. And um, it can be careless and recklessness. And in the reverse, that's kind of what I feel is there's an element of carelessness and recklessness in what you are doing right now, possibly. Um and it might be because you are uh, having the this petty quarrel. You're trying to find the inner strength to deal with it in a, an appropriate manner. But part of you wants to just be like, "Fuck it, fuck it," and I'm just gonna take this journey. And I'm not. I'm gonna pack lightly, and um, I'm not gonna pay attention to where I'm going. I'm just gonna smell the the breeze. And there is a a beautiful element of naivete with this card um it's because it's so pure and so innocent but in its innocence there's also this air of ignorance that that comes up so i'm not saying that you're being ignorant i'm just saying there this can be sort of a childlike um attitude and a sort of negation of responsibilities with this card. So you do have to be, you know, a little careful. It can be an exciting card to get when you're starting a new journey and when a, a, one cycle has ended and a new cycle has begun. And I do feel like there could be a new cycle here, but you might be approaching it in the wrong way. Um, because we are in the reverse, I feel like it's really kind of uh, taking risks that don't need to be taken or taking risks for no, no good reason um, and being kind of reckless. So you just want to watch out for that. Um, I have the Page of Pentacles energy here as well, which is another kind of, you know, immature, more immature type of an energy. Uh, but it is the beginning of something new. The, the Page of Pentacles has this, this great potential to be something great and to make something, to build something. 
Um, there's, we're talking about material wealth. We're talking about material, you know, projects. So there could be a new project that you're coming into um, that will be very uh, sustaining to you uh, spiritually and mentally, and you'll receive a lot of clarity on this. And you're very excited. It's, again, a new opportunity. It's a new project. It's a new uh, way of doing things. The Six of Swords we have uh, in the reverse. Um, the Earth signs just got this. Uh, and I want to say the Fire signs as well. So I know the Fire signs got this. <clears throat> With the Six of Swords, it did come up in the reverse, but the Six of Swords is about moving from one shore to another. So you, it could be a physical, literal move. It can be travel as well. Um, in the reverse, I feel like that might be stifled a bit. Like maybe there's going to be something that trips you up or that stifles you or, or holds you back from making this move. Um, this can be a spiritual move as well. It does not have to be literal. It's a very much a metaphorical um, a depiction as well. We have the hermit back here. He is guiding and navigating the ship. And this woman has basically put all of her trust in him. The hermit is very wise, and he is someone who goes inward and has, has gone inward quite a bit in order to uh, find out who he is and the manner of, of truth in his life that persists in his life. So he's very much about truth and wisdom right here. And so he is helping navigate this, sh this ship or this vessel. And she's surrounded by these swords, almost in like a fence, like a fence of protection in a way. But she also has this little box here, um, which is carrying, it's almost like her sacrifice. Because this is a very spiritual card. This is a spiritual journey. This is you, um, it, I mean, you could be literally taking trips on the water and finding that you connect so well with the water. It, it gives you sort of a spiritual growth element. Um, so if you're traveling right now, I definitely urge you to uh, seek out water. It can be very healing and very spiritual, um, spiritually uplifting. So uh, this is, you don't know exactly where you're headed yet. You don't know which shoreline you're going to, but that's okay. You are content right now. You know that there is a sacrifice that has to be made and you're willing to give that up in order to seek out a new life or a new start on a new shoreline, basically, okay? And right here we have the Five of Cups. Five of Cups is speaking to um, a previous, probably a loss, um, possibly an ended relationship or something. There's three cups down here that are all spilled. There's a fish flopping around over here as well, but he still has two cups in his hands. The focus on this card is that despite these three cups that have been knocked over, you still have two cups, two cups that are upright, two cups that are full. Focus on those two cups. The two cups could be your kids, your um, another, uh, you know, another lover or another opportunity, or it can be self-love or some other type of um, some, something that you have love for. And again, this guy is by the river, uh, by a waterfall and out in nature. And I feel like that is just going to be very healing and spiritual for you. And it's going to be uh, something that you're called to. <clears throat> so again, don't focus on crying over spilled milk. Uh, sort of a thing is one of the messages with this card focus on what it is that you do have there is a positive uh, to this card and you just have to look at it you can't you don't want to focus on these spilled cups down here now here we have the king of swords this is usually Aquarius um, but can be Libra Gemini as well it's the it's an air sign this king is a very stern king. He knows exactly what he wants. He is a very truthful individual. He comes to you with truth and he expects you to come to him with truth. No bullshit. He will cut that shit right out. So any bullshit in your life right now, um, it's it, because this is in the reverse, I feel like you're not willing to cut it out. You're not cutting out the things that you need to cut out. And this can be problematic. It can raise uh, problems. And again, this is sort of like these two are bookending at a catty corner across from each other here on each corner I have. So we have the fool uh, journey and then this king of swords, these, these energies combined, it's like a carelessness and a, an inability to, to make these solid moves that the, this king of swords would normally make. It's like you're choosing to be more of this immature type of an energy. Um, and there just, there has to be cuts made. You just have to. And this, this king is very high in his head. He's high up in the mountains. This is all about 
the air signs are very much about logic and reason and thinking, um, sometimes to the point of overthinking things that, you know, we're accused of, of overthinking. I'm an Aquarius, so um, I get that a lot. And sometimes that's true, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is exactly the right amount of thinking um, that you're applying to a situation in order to come to the end result that you need to come to or the conclusion that you need to come to. And sometimes the conclusion is you got to cut people out or cut situations out. You're going to cut through to the truth of the matter and anything that doesn't belong or that doesn't fit is going to be uh, washed out. So because, like I said, this is in the reverse, I feel like you're not wanting to be cold like this guy. I mean, he's not, he isn't cold necessarily, but he can be seen as cold. A lot of times um, he's seen as detached. Aquarians um, and the other air signs can be seen as detached and cold. And it's not that, it's just that we know how to separate our emotions from our logic and thought process. And so we're willing to follow that logic, even if it means that the emotional side is going to uh, suffer or that the emotional side has to be put on the back burner. So this king is all about getting that job done. And in the reverse right now, I feel like you're denying that somewhat in your life. And again, with this two of swords energy, we have right next to the king, uh, the two of swords is about you needing to make a decision. You need to make a decision and um, you're not wanting to. You're at a stalemate right now. You're you are you're at a truce or some kind of of level where nothing has to be to be done and you like it there but that's not the way that this is going to have to play out this is you're going to have to make a decision right here she has both of her swords behind her back she's not wanting to fight she does not want to fight any longer and she's failing to see that this wolf is creeping up on her right here but he's going to get closer and closer and closer and she's going to have to make a decision um, with with her swords she's gonna have to turn and face this so this is something that you are choosing not to face um, you're choosing not to face and not to cut something out and you know when it comes to our relationships it's very difficult to do this I think everyone struggles with this but I like to to put it this way there's the book of your life and some people are going to be in the book throughout the entire book every chapter every page some people are only going to be in it one chapter or a couple of chapters some people are only going to be in it for one page maybe a paragraph you have to be able to determine who is going to make it into the full book of your life or the full chapter of your life you you have to be able to make these decisions and these cuts because there's not room for everyone as much as we would like to say that there is and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not don't get me wrong I'm not trying to say that universally we shouldn't love everyone okay of course love is the goal love over fear um, love triumphs you know that is is the goal to love thy neighbor to love strangers to love everyone yes but in loving them still there's only so much room in our personal lives for close relationships and we have to choose those close relationships uh, very carefully and we have to base it on what what do we want for our own lives and who do we want to surround ourselves with that's going to help our growth um, and that's going to catapult us to a new level of understanding in life because we don't want to get stuck in old energy and stay stuck in that. We, we want to get higher and higher and higher and that is the goal. That should be the goal is to evolve. Um, right here we have the Ace of Cups, which is a beautiful um, love offering possibly. It's, it's, it's your cup is overflowing with love. It could be that you're very emotional right now and that you're not, you're having trouble sort of um, um, reining it or uh, reeling that energy in, those emotions and so forth. You could be having a lot of um, past love energy wreak havoc sort of in your logic and thought process. So I feel like the water signs, and this is very much a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, uh, water sign, especially a Pisces uh, card. So very much watery energy. You could just really feel an overwhelming abundance of love for yourself or for others or from, from others as well. Um, or it could speak to you having a little bit of trouble managing your emotions right now that you just feel like you're overflowing with this, with love or with energy and emotions. 
and you're not sure what to do with that energy. Um, but then you also are are met with this need to cut certain people out. So it's sort of contradictory kind of energy that you're not sure exactly what to do with. Let me just clarify this Ace of Cups. Remember the Ace of Cups was for the water signs. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Okay, so this is the card of Cancer. Um, this is about moving forward. This is, so we have this Ace of Cups. This is what's clarifying the Ace of Cups here. So the, the Chariot card is about taking control of and grabbing the reins of your life and really steering the direction, not allowing your emotions to just steer you. You have to incorporate some of this logic and reasoning as much as you don't want to into your wateriness. So Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio are very, very watery energies, meaning they're very emotional energies. They're very flowy, um, it, whereas the air signs are very up in their head and very logical. You need to have a balance of both of these. And this card right here speaks of balance for one um, and duality, masculine and feminine, balancing the masculine and feminine. And it's also, this is uh, would be Sagittarius, and he's pulling the Cancer uh, behind. He's pulling the, the cancer chariot. So there could be a fire sign that is helping sort of literally light a fire under your ass, um, who is, who is helping kind of pull you along, drag you along into the right, into the right direction. Um, but you do need to, you, you really have to balance this watery vibe and get control of your vessel. And you, you're going to have to start making some cuts and making some, some serious decisions. And this is going to require some deep introspection, um, which we see here with the Six of Swords. The Swords energy is always about um, reasoning, logic, really thinking things through and being a higher minded about things. And so this is important that you, you need to find this path that you're going to take. And it doesn't have to be um, laid out miles ahead, but... For now, you do need to set some boundaries, possibly, um, like we see here with her with the, these swords. It's sort of like a little bit of a shield of protection going on there. And this is very much about staying on a course, on a path. Um, the chariot card is about you taking control of your life. This could be also a physical move. So we have two cards that, that depict possible physical movement, uh, moving from one house to another or travel. And the chariot card is also just about getting your shit together. It's just, it's getting your shit together. It's pulling it in. It's a very masculine uh, type of an energy. So this is what is needed right now in order to, uh, to progress is to really gain control of the reins and steer this thing where it is you want it to go and not just floating along. Eight of Pentacles, there's something that you just... Um, aren't willing to put the work into, or you weren't willing to put the work into, you might have been bored, uh, but there's there was some opportunity for learning that you didn't, uh, you didn't take seriously, or you didn't want to, you just didn't want to work for it. The Eight of Pentacles is about working. It is about working hard. It is about, it's the apprentice card as well. It's about learning a new trade, a new skill. It's about, you know, if you're going back to school, if you're taking workshops or lessons or you're a craftsman and you're, you're starting to really get into your craft, into building, um, that sort of thing, that's what this is about. This is about building something solid and really putting a lot of time and effort into it and kind of losing yourself in your work. In the reverse, which is how it came up, I see laziness, I see boredom, I see um, just not willing to put in the energy, not willing to put in the work. So you have to put in this work. I'm telling you, there's some serious work that needs to be done in order to kind of pull everything back together. You have the strength going for you. You have the strength to do this, to, to manifest this in your life. So roll with that. Don't be careless and foolish. Um, be very careful with your energy and where you, where you um, expend it and who you expend it for. I'm going to pull one more card on this fool. the tower. So, um, and we have the tower in reverse. It's like you're, you're trying to avoid this tower moment. This tower has to fall. You have to let this tower fall. You're so in avoidance of this. The tower falling is indicative of 
a certain way of living or a certain situation, relationship, whatever, that isn't sustainable. It can't continue on the way it is. It's not built on a solid foundation to begin with. And so it's so easy to topple and it's going to topple and all of it is going to come down. And then you're going to be able to rebuild on a new, stronger, sturdy foundation. And so the tower card is not something to be feared, but in the reverse, I, it's you trying to desperately avoid this. And again, we have with this fool in reverse, it, it's only the fool that avoids this tower because after the tower comes the healing card of Aquarius. It's the star card and the star card is healing. You have to let this tower fall in order to receive the healing. You have to go through it. You, you just do. You have to be able to let all of this come down um, and sift through the rubble to see what remnants remain, if any, and then rebuild on a new solid foundation. And that would take this eight of pentacles, but it's like, you're not, you don't want to put in the work. You don't want to put in the work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, this doesn't necessarily apply to all of you, but I, I feel a little frustrated right now with this reading because it is like a heart and a head thing. It's a heart versus head. It's water versus uh, swords. It's water versus fire. Um, you just want to keep going with the flow and going with the flow. And right now, the seasons of astrology right now are not going to let you do that. They're going to force you to change. There's a lot of change happening um, in astrology right now. A lot of uh, different movements of planetary um, uh, shifts. And you you don't have to necessarily be aware of those specifically, but just be aware that this the, this time is is a time of massive growth and expansion, and it's about revisiting these these things that you thought were dead, and it's about karma coming back around. It's karma coming back around, and you're going to have to deal with it. So if you've been shoving this shit aside for some time, and you have not been dealing with with this stuff that you're supposed to be dealing with, you are going to be faced with it. You're you're gonna have to deal with it. This tower is coming. So you um, don't be afraid, don't be frightened, just let it come and let it pass. It's just like um, when you have to burn the grass in order to, you know, you have to just take it all out in order to allow fresh new growth. That's exactly what is going on with this tower card. So I hope that helps. I'm going to go ahead and pull uh, one numerology card for you guys just to cap this reading. see what we have here for my water signs love partnership okay love partnership um i'm gonna go ahead and read from the book on the numerology on this number 26 which reduces to eight uh, which we have the strength card here the number eight is um, all about incorporating lessons and gaining strength so love partnership, this card indicates a time when a romantic relationship is about to enter your life. Perhaps you're single and are about to meet a special someone, or maybe your current relationship is about to progress to a deeper level of understanding and commitment. Either way, love is just around the corner, provided you believe. In the meantime, you are being encouraged to focus on what you have to offer rather than what you'd like to receive. By doing so, you will attract a mutually loving relationship that serves both parties' needs. Remember that you must believe that love exists in order to attract it into your life. So work on any limiting beliefs or negative thoughts you may have about love. In order to improve your current situation, you're being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life, cycles that are leading you towards a romantic love relationship. So love and appreciate yourself as you are today. Embrace your imperfections and be assured that you are worthy of love. Your loved one will appear when you know without a doubt that you are lovable and deserving. So, uh, yeah, there, so there could be a love relationship about to enter your life. I, I, I want to warn you though. I feel like if you don't let this tower fall and some of this, this work that you have to do, the, these cuts that you have to make, if you don't do that, this is going to delay this love partnership. I feel like this, that love partnership is coming granted you, um, you make some of these changes, some of these hard cuts, and you really start taking control of your life and, and you're not living so watery and so loose. It's one thing to definitely to, to, you know, love yourself for who you are. Um, 
but there can still be patterns of your behavior that uh, you don't want to justify by saying, well, I love who I am. And so I am who I am. Um, behavior is changeable. Behavior is changeable and behavior becomes our character. Um, so whatever character you are, it's, how do I say, don't, it's not necessarily the behavior that you are in love with. It's the character. And so a person will fall in love with your character, but there might be behaviors um, and ways of going about your relationships that you need to change. It does feel like there's, um, you need to have a shift in, in the way that you perceive your, your personal relationships. I think that is all for you guys. So thank you for, um, listening to the reading. I hope that you will like the video, subscribe to my channel. That would be great. I'm getting started here. So, um, any support is greatly appreciated. And um, I hope you guys have a great June. Leave any comments that you feel free, uh, feel like leaving in the comment section. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Thanks.